the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. The Coptic month Tut is the first month in the Coptic year. And the church speaks to us through the readings of the Sundays of this month about the love of God. Last Sunday, we heard about the counsel of God. The counsel of God is the salvation of every single person. He wants God, God, he wants us all to be saved. Some people accepted the counsel of God regarding themselves, and some people rejected the counsel of God regarding themselves like the scribe and Pharisees. Then today, the second Sunday, we may ask, but how can we learn about the counsel of God? And the counsel of God is revealed to us. As you heard in the gospel of today, Jesus prayed and said, I praise you, Father, Lord, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Revealed them to babes. Babes here means the humble, like Saint Mary, the mother of God. God actually sent Archangel Gabriel to Saint Mary to reveal to her the economy of salvation that God will become a man and he will took flesh from St. Mary and be born of her and his name will be Jesus because he will save the, the people from their sins. So God reveals himself to the humble. Also God reveals himself to those who are trust in him. Like Moses the prophet, Moses trusted God in all his life. Even when God gave him this great responsibility to lead the people for 40 years from Egypt to the land of the promised, uh, promised land, from Egypt to the promised land. If you can imagine how one person lead these thousands of people in the wilderness and their demands. Sometimes when we take uh, a trip with 40 persons for two weeks or three weeks, we feel the burden of just leading and responding to the needs of people just for two weeks. Moses actually led the people 40 years, 40 years, and not 40 persons, thousands of persons. He trusted God. That's why God revealed himself to Moses and appeared to him and told him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, God of Jacob, when appeared to him in the burning bush. Also, God revealed himself to those who love him. Like St. John, the beloved. St. John was very, very close. Even he gave this title to himself, the disciple whom the Lord loved. That's why God revealed to him mysteries about the end of the days and his second coming. And this book, Revelation, is a revelation from God to John because John loved God. Also, God revealed himself, reveals himself to those who in connection with him, who pray to him, like Abraham, like Elijah. God revealed himself to the prophets, Ezekiel, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all these people, because they were in connection with God in the life of prayer, to the extent that Abraham is called the friend of God. 
before God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah, he discussed this with Abraham as his friend. Also, God reveals himself to those who repent and return back to him, like St. Paul, because of his zeal and repentance, God appeared to him and led him in the right way. And finally, God reveals himself to those who study his word and read his word day and night, as David the prophet, who several times, like in Psalm 119, he mentioned how God reveals himself through his word to us. So God reveals himself to several people, but he does not reveal himself to the prudent, to the wise, to those who are wise in their own eyes, not the heavenly wisdom, but the earthly wisdom, those who follow the earthly wisdom, God doesn't reveal himself to these people. Then a lawyer asked the Lord, and he told him, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So the Lord told him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So the Lord told him, the answer to your question is revealed in the scripture. But the problem is, how do you read it? What is your reading of it? Many people will say, we study the scripture, but we are not like David. God is not revealed to us as he revealed himself to David although we read the scripture. And this question that God asked the lawyer, how do you read, is a very important. Because some people read the scripture to support a certain idea in their mind. Like other denominations, when they read the scripture, they look for certain verses to support their opinion to the poor, their dogma. So they are not reading the scripture to learn and to edify themselves, but to support a, a dogma or an idea in their mind. Like, for example, Arius, when he could not comprehend how Jesus can be God, so he read the scripture and he found this verse, the Father is greater than I, so he held to this verse and said, yes, then Jesus is not God. Jesus is created by God, and, and so on. So some people read the scripture to prove a certain idea, not necessarily uh, a dogmatic, but even a moral. Nowadays, people who support homosexuality, they are trying to find support from the scripture to homosexuality. So when David uh, said about Jonathan, uh, I loved you more than the love of women, he said, this is a very support homosexuality. And they try even to say the word that's translated homosexual, in reality, should be bit of fire, not homosexual. And so on. So people here, they have idea in their mind and they want to find a proof and twist the translation, twist the interpretation in order to prove their point. This reading will not help you to receive revelation from God. Another people read, but they read just as to increase their knowledge, and that's it. So they read the Old Testament, the New Testament, just to get knowledge, uh, what about what happened to Abraham, what happened to Isaac, what happened to Moses, what happened to Elijah. So just reading for gaining knowledge. It is not a transformative reading. Reading to transform me, to change me. No, they just read to gain knowledge. Some people read to study. They study the scripture and they can teach the scripture, 
but their life is completely away from God. And this is a problem of many contemporary theologians. They actually theologians, they read the scripture, and, but, but not with the fear of God, not with a godly life. And these people, most likely, they will fall into her heresies. Because what will protect a person from falling into a heresy? A godly life. When a person walks in the fear of God. But when just I study and relying on philosophy and relying on my mind in uh, interpreting the scripture uh, and dismissing uh, 2,000 years of holy tradition and just what I accept by my mind, I receive it, what I reject, I reject and I make my mind is the ultimate authority in theology, people, these people do not receive any revelation from God. And some people read the scripture to criticize it, like people from other religions, they read the scripture in order to criticize it. Although they read the scripture, but they will not benefit from it. That's why the Lord said to the lawyer, what is your reading of it? How do you read? When we read the scripture, we need to read it in a spirit of submission. We need to read it in a spirit of listening to the voice of God. How the scripture transform me. How the scripture change me. That's what we call transformative uh, reading. That's why before we read the gospel in the church, there is a litany called the litany of the gospel. And we ask God, to enlighten our mind, to understand through the Holy Spirit the meaning behind every word in the scripture. Also, not only to be, to be hearers of the word, but also to be doers of the word. Because as St. James said, if you hear the word, but you don't do it, you are like a person looked at a mirror and saw his face in a mirror. But then he left and forgot what he was. The scripture is a mirror. The scripture tell me how to live my life, how to inherit the eternal life. But if I look at this mirror and then I forget everything, what is the point? That's why the fathers told us, after you read the scripture, you need to reflect, meditate, Memorize verses, apply it in your life, live by the word of God. So we read it with our eyes, understand it with our mind according to the interpretation of the early church fathers, keep it in your heart and apply it in your life. Then when he asked the lawyer, what is your reading of it? So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Then the Lord told him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. So as if the Lord told him, the answer is already in the scripture. You came and asked me, what shall I, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? But if you look at the scripture, you will find the answer in the scripture. And to, to be saved, as I told you, the economy of God for us is our salvation. But our salvation actually aims to another point. So salvation is not the ultimate goal. But there is another goal behind our salvation, which is to be one with God, to be united with God. I cannot be one with God. I cannot be the bride of Christ unless I am saved first. That's why our relationship with God is a loving relationship. With Jesus Christ, we are his bride. With God the Father, we are his children. And with the Holy Spirit, we are his dwelling place. 
you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit abide in you. So the salvation is one step leading to another step, which is the communion with God, the fellowship with God. That's why St. John, the apostle of love, in his first letter, he said, this is the good news that we want to declare to you, that we have fellowship with God, and also we have fellowship with one another. You can read this in First John uh, chapter 1. St. John said, Uh, that which we have seen and heard we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us we are declaring, we are revealing this to you so you have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ and these things we write to you that your joy may be full so as I told you, salvation is just one step, but lead to another step, which is the communion, the fellowship with God, the fellowship with one another. And there is no fellowship without love. If we want to have fellowship with one another, fellowship with God, then it is a loving relationship. So when the lawyer asked the Lord, what shall I do to inherit the kingdom of God? He told him what's written in the law. Love the Lord God and love your neighbor as yourself. And as they say, the scripture in a word is love. In love. St. Augustine said, love God and do whatever you want to do. Because if you really love God, then you will not fall in any sin. If you really love God, you want to spend time with him. You will talk to him in prayer. You will listen to him in the scripture. You will come and, and be with him in the church. And you, will, you repent and f confess your sins and commune with him in the Eucharist. If we really love God and if we really love one another, then actually most of the sins we commit uh, will disappear from our life. Why we gossip about each other? Why we don't forgive one another? Why we judge one another? Why we compete with one another? If you think about all these issues, because lack of love, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, St. Paul spoke about three things about love, or four things actually about love. He said, Love bears all things, bears all things, endurance, forbearance. Number two, believes all things. Number three, hopes all things. And number four, endures, be patient, all things. Let's examine ourselves and see, do we bear all things? Do we believe everything? Do we hope all things? Do we endure all things or not? Definitely nobody reaches the perfect love. All of us who are growing toward perfect love. But we need to be growing. We need to be growing. We need to learn how to love one another. The Lord asked us to love our enemies. But how can I love my enemies and I don't know how to love my brother? And I don't know how to love my my neighbor. So let's ask God to open our heart with love toward him and toward one another because this is the road to the inheritance of eternal life. So God has a counsel regarding us. This counsel is to be in fellowship with him. This counsel is revealed to those who are humble to those who pray, to those who love one another, to those who trust him, to those who live the life of repentance, and to those who study his word. 
But the problem in studying his word, how do you read? Do you read to criticize the word of God? Do you read to prove an idea in your mind? Do you read just for knowledge? Do you study it to be a theologian, but without living a godly life? Or do you read in a transformative way to transform yourself, to let the word of God transform you and to change you? Actually, when you read in the transformative way, then the Holy Spirit will work in you and will transform your heart. And your heart will be a loving heart, loving heart toward God, a loving heart toward one another, and in this way will inherit the eternal life. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.